What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here. My name's Luke, and in this video we're going to be taking another look at the Landscaper as a part of my Does It Suck series. The Landscaper is a unique torque shotgun that is available as a part of the Clan Wars Saga. Now like a lot of other weapons, it did receive a buff as a part of the community patch, and we've actually looked at this weapon with the community patch once before, but that was community patch revision 4.0, and I decided that with that revision the Landscaper was still abysmal. In other words, it still sucked. Now, a new version of the community patch has come out, revision 4.1, and it changes the landscaper again. So maybe this will actually finally fix the landscaper and make it a semi-viable weapon. Let's take a look at why the landscaper sucks so bad real quick without the community patch, and then we'll apply the community patch to see if it is improved. Now, when we fire the landscaper, you can see that it has a very unique pattern. It basically fires in a square pattern with pellets uh, grouping up on the four corners. Now, this means that no pellets will go actually well where you're aiming, and instead they'll go off to the right and to the left and then up and down as well. And basically, if we're pretending if this enemy is a pipe here, we couldn't hit this pipe by aiming directly at it from a relatively abbreviated range here. If we scoot closer, eventually we can actually land those pellets on the pipe, but you basically have to be barrel stuffing the pipe or an enemy in order to um, <laughs> get it to land all of the pellets. But you can see if you get too close to the pellets there, it will kill you. So this weapon has a lot of things working against it here. Basically, the box shape spread pattern is absolutely abysmal to use. And then, um, the weapon actually hurts you if you're at a range where you can actually land all of the pellets on target. So let's take a look at that. Let's try to kill this first dude in here and see um, what happens. We're not going to slag him at first just to show that this weapon cannot kill without slag. It actually can get critical hits, which is a little bit surprising. But you can see here that if we're directly up against this guy, we're barely outpacing his health regen and stuff. And if he's walking away, we really stand no chance. If we slag him then we can actually do a little bit of damage to him, but you can see that still pretty abysmal damage for being directly adjacent to the guy wearing a explosive relic and also a legendary soldier comm, which both boosts the damage of the landscaper significantly. So with that in mind, we weren't able to kill that guy there, and it's just a very, very poor weapon. Using this weapon is kind of hazardous to your health as well. Like I said, if you use it at a range where you can actually land pellets, you're going to be dealing damage to yourself. So let's go ahead and try to finish this guy off with slag. That was one magazine there. Two magazines now. And then we'll finish him off with this third magazine. So that's pretty abysmal for a torque shotgun. Um, if we were using a different torque shotgun, like this casual pounder, I guarantee we would have taken out that enemy a lot quicker. And if we were using a high tier torque shotgun, like this Rock Ravager, we would have absolutely destroyed him. But with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at how it's going to do here against some of these guys. So I'll throw my turret up there on the ceiling and then we'll hopefully have these guys distracted enough that we can land some shots on them. So that guy, he died, so it's not, it's not impossible to get kills with this weapon when you're using Battlefront and Slag and everything else, but it is inferior to virtually any other torque shotgun that you could use here on Axton. Now, theoretically, you could find a white rarity torque shotgun that's going to be very, very bad, but keep in mind that all white rarity torque shotguns also have a purple rarity and a gemstone rarity. And so with that in mind, you can't really consider the low rarities of the weapon to be their own weapon. They're just a lower rarity of a weapon that does exist in a better build. So let's finish this guy off here. I think I might have actually killed myself with the uh, landscaper pellets there. I'm not entirely certain. Now, one thing that is interesting about this weapon is that it does not get grenade damage boost without the community patch or, you know, with any lower revision of the community patch than 4.1. Now, 4.1 is actually going to add grenade damage, and that's why I'm testing it here on Axton. Um... I guess we could have shown here that these exploders charging us are a terrible, terrible uh, enemy to use the landscaper on because they'll charge right at you and you won't be able to actually hit them, which is terrible. Now we have a hot loader and a super badass loader here, both of which are quite dangerous. I'm going to try to take out the hot loader. So we got the hot loader taken out. Let's try not to die to this guy until we at least get some transfusions in. All right, now I'm going to approach him and try to basically barrel stuff him here so that we can land most of our pellets uh, with the landscaper on him. Now, it's not the safest strategy or <laughs> 
the most efficient strategy, but this is basically the only way to use the Landscaper well, is to get close enough to the enemy that you can actually land some of your pellets on him. If we were using a different shotgun, we would have a much better time against these enemies. Let's go ahead and kill this next badass just for kicks and giggles, and then we will go ahead and apply the community patch and see how it has changed. Now, like I said, it is going to get grenade damage, so it's going to be much better on Axton than it was prior. Let's go ahead and uh, fire a few rounds into this guy. You can see that that's just not very good um, for a Torque shotgun with an explosive relic. It's pretty abysmal to do less than half of his health through um, two magazines there. That's bad news. Let's make sure this guy's still slagged and... Yeah, we're not going to get a second wind. So let's go ahead and apply that community patch and see if this weapon's going to become more viable if we're actually able to consistently kill super badass loaders without the turret doing most of the work for us. Now, basically, with the 4.1 version of the community patch, this weapon is supposed to get a new spread. It's no longer supposed to hurt us, so let's go ahead and check that out real quick. No self damage there, and it's also going to get grenade damage buffs. So let's go to Sanctuary real quick and just see that it is getting grenade damage buffs by testing it once with the Legendary Soldier, and then switching to a Legendary Grenadier to see if it's going to improve the damage. And I do imagine that it would. Um, that is something that's going to help this weapon out a little bit. Now, I think it definitely should get grenade damage because those quite obviously look like grenades. And so it seemed a little bit weird that this weapon did not get grenade damage to me. Let's go ahead and test it out, though. And we'll also see the new firing pattern here, which is awesome. So, yeah, that's working, um, because those pellets are actually hitting him there. Now, with it being a shotgun, it'll be a little bit inconsistent uh, as far as our damage, but we can see that when the pellets explode, it's 1467. I can't count on the spread always giving me accurate results here, so we're just going to have to go with the uh, pellet explosion there, and we will see 1467. So let's go ahead and switch on over to the legendary Grenadier Com, and what I want to see is something better than that. This one should explode here. 1870. So huge that it now gets grenade damage buffs. And we can see that the spread is much more akin to a normal torque shotgun now. Which makes it much easier to use because you don't have to be at point blank range. This is significantly better now than it was before. Even if it didn't get grenade damage buffs. Just because of the new spread pattern. So I think that's pretty awesome about the weapon there. Let's go ahead and see how it's going to perform out in the Washburn Refinery. I think it also got a new barrel now, switching to the triple barrel, which I think is the bandit barrel, instead of the double barrel that it had beforehand. So that makes it look a little bit cooler too, and it kind of makes it match the Triquetra, which is another torque shotgun, or it's not a torque shotgun, another unique shotgun at the least, that you can get from the... Uh, Clan Wars Quest. The Triquetra is actually a Jacob shotgun. Either way, let's move forward here and head on into the Washburn Refinery to see if this weapon's a little bit more fun to use now. The thing that, you know, makes me sad about... Um, I can't find the Washburn Refinery. This is my favorite map. Where is it? All right. The thing that kind of makes me sad about unique weapons that are just completely unusable is that someone had to go through a quest to get this right and you get a you get a weapon and it has red text and you think you're gonna have something awesome and then it sucks that is disappointing to me not every unique weapon needs to be top tier or anything like that but I do think most unique weapons do deserve to be viable which I did not consider the landscaper to be beforehand we'll approach this guy I was gonna say we were approaching without slag but I can't imagine that that slag barrel doesn't blow up here in a minute you can see, though, that one magazine without slag killed him. And then once we had slag, it only took another shot to take out the rest of his health there. I will say without slag, I didn't mean to say that it killed him. I said it, I meant to say that it took out half of his health and then the next shot with slag killed him. That's pretty impressive um, to take a weapon that was completely unviable to something that is actually going to be beneficial to us now. And we can see that, you know, <laughs> you can actually get one shots on these enemies using this shotgun. Which is good, because there are a lot of torque shotguns that you can get one shot, one kills on slagged enemies with, with Axton. And so now that this one is actually getting grenade damage buffs, this one might be a little bit more special for Axton than some other torque shotguns will be. And now this is an enemy who's charging at us, and we can actually blow him up instead of having the pellets go to the right and the left of our enemy and landing no shots on target. 
This was absolutely one of the worst weapons for taking out exploders prior, and now it's a decent weapon for taking out exploders. And you can even use it at a, you know, semi-decent range there in order to kill um, enemies, so that's pretty cool. Still getting three shots per mag with this weapon, which is pretty solid. Let's go ahead and see if we're able to take out this super badass loader without the benefits of our uh, turret. Also, this weapon no longer hurts us, so that's pretty huge as well. We can use it at a very close range without worrying about it de dealing damage to us, which is good because other Torque shotguns, especially high tier ones, like the Ravager here, ooh, the Basalt, it looks pretty cool. They changed it from Rock to Basalt with the Galvanizing Gemstone mods, and it looks awesome now. So if you're using a Ravager, you will notice that even though it's an explosive shotgun, it does not deal damage to the player. And so with that in mind, it was always really irritating to have a Torque shotgun that not only had a terrible spread, but one that could also kill you. So let's get this guy slagged. We do not have Battlefront. But we can see that one magazine took over probably two-thirds of his health there, and we're able to finish him off without him even putting us into fight for our lives. So that is pretty cool there. Let's move forward. I can already tell you I'm thinking this weapon does not suck, but I am interested to see if its intended gimmick actually works now against some of these exploders that we're about to be facing. So that's pretty cool that we're able to actually kill these enemies with it now. It's still going to have the lingering pellets if they don't actually make contact with an enemy. So let's go ahead and... Ooh, that was pretty nifty. Let's go ahead and um, put some pellets out in front of this guy and see if he walks into them. They explode a lot quicker now when enemies actually walk into them, and so that's pretty cool. Lay a trap for that dude there, and it blew him up. So this is much better now. The Landscaper can actually do what it was meant to do, which was set a minefield for enemies to run into. And it could not do that effectively be beforehand for a number of reasons. One, the pellets took a little while to explode. Additionally, um, it had a terrible spread. And then beyond that, it didn't actually get grenade damage. So if you even led them into your trap, it wasn't actually dealing that much damage. Now it's kind of cool. You can lead the enemies into the trap, and that's pretty neat. Um, there should be some gun enemies spawning here. I don't know why it's taken so long for them to spawn. Threw my turret a little early there. So um, against a bull loader, this might be a decent shotgun because those pellets are going to explode and go through his shield there and still deal damage to him, which is really nice. Now, this weapon actually seems to have a less random spread than a normal shotgun would, and that's actually one of the things that I think is really helping it excel right now, is that its spread is kind of fixed as these two horizontal lines is what I'm seeing, and that's a very effective spread for at least taking out loaders, but probably taking out a bunch of other enemies as well. Unfortunately, we didn't have Battlefront long enough to engage this guy with Battlefront, but I don't think that's going to be a big problem for us here. It is surprising to me that this weapon can get critical hits, but it could get critical hits before the community patch, so meh. This weapon's quite solid now. I'm very excited that the weapon is usable. Again, I, I don't like the idea of wasting a unique gimmick on a weapon that is just unviable, basically, you know? It's kind of a cute little gimmick, right? We know this guy's going to jump up here. Let's go ahead and lay some mines for him, and he'll walk into it. That's kind of neat. You can see that the explosion radius on these pellets is also much bigger, which makes it a much more effective weapon at setting up these minefields. Because the enemy doesn't have to walk over it exactly, right? So we'll set those there. This guy's going to come forward a little bit further, and the blast radius hits him again. So that's pretty impressive there. I like that about the weapon. You can actually use it like it was probably intended to be used now by setting, you know, these mines. And that's kind of what the red text would imply. The red text says, get off my lawn. So that's kind of like, you know, <laughs> you have your lawn kind of booby trapped, basically. Um, that's pretty cool, too, that we can use it at range because of its unique spread pattern. This weapon's going to be more effective with Axton than it is on other characters because of Axton's grenade damage boost. But I can tell you that, you know, on zero, the fact that this has a fixed spread pattern and you're actually able to relatively consistently hit critical hits with it might make it somewhat viable. I'm not entirely sure about that. I might have to test that here um, after we finish this run, you know, finish off Hurley and the goons. We'll see how it goes. Looks like there was an enemy behind me there. I would love to have one of these bull loaders charge me. I'll see if he'll uh, come towards me like that.
so it did look like the bull loader walked into at least some of them. I'm not exactly sure how long the pellets still linger. Um, we'll have to take a look at that. I'd imagine that after a while, they do still rise out of the ground and blow up on their own, even if they're undisturbed by enemies. Man, that's, that's an effective shotgun now. Which is cool, because up until this point, I mean, Borderlands 2 has been out for years now, and this weapon has never been viable. Never really been viable. And, I mean, I guess you could have probably gotten away with using it at level 50, but keep in mind, you could use a Love Thumper at level 50 with zero, and basically never break Mini Must Fall in a lot of maps. Maybe not all of the maps, but a map like this, you could have a pretty solid chance at making it through in under five deceptions, which is pretty ridiculous. It goes to show that when Borderlands 2 came out, they had a problem where the game simply was not difficult enough to actually gauge if weapons were good or not. And perhaps that's why some people had such an affinity for relatively poor weapons like the Infinity and some others. And I think that's probably the case. So I hope when Borderlands 3 does eventually launch, however far into the future that might be, that they do release it with an Ultimate Vault Hunter mode out of box. Because then you could actually have the chance to balance the weapons properly prior to releasing the game. And I don't think they could really do that too well at level 50. When 50 was the level cap, basically every weapon was destroying enemies. And so even a terrible weapon like the Landscaper may have gone unnoticed in testing as a weapon that was really too crappy to be a quest reward. You know what I mean? Um, it was a side quest too. This wasn't a weapon that was just given to the player. You had to complete a quest for it. This is a weapon that can kind of just be given to you. And it's a very, very good weapon. So, it wouldn't make sense for the Landscaper to be so much worse than pretty much every other quest reward in my mind. We'll go ahead and go forward here and see if we're able to take out Hurley and his bros. I would imagine that we're able to. And it is pretty cool that it has a fixed spread now that you're actually able to use it at range like that. It had a fixed spread beforehand, but the fixed spread was so obnoxiously terrible that you couldn't use it at range unless you only wanted to land about 25% of your pellets. Or I guess 33% if you had the casual prefix. So we got this guy way up here, which is not exactly where I wanted him. And we have this guy a little bit closer to us. I'm going to throw the turret here. And then we'll see what we can do about finishing this guy off. Cool. So that'll finish that guy off. And I would love for this guy to come down. But with the landscaper's fixed spread, we don't necessarily need him to come down. I'm going to recall the turret here so that it will hopefully be cooled down by the time that Hurley spawns because Hurley with the community patch became a lot tougher. He went from a pushover enemy to something who is, you know, quite dangerous. So that's kind of cool. Now Hurley is a large target and I don't expect to be missing any of the pellets with the new spread here on the landscaper and I would imagine that it's going to take out Hurley quite quickly. So we threw our turret there that should get him slagged for us and then we're going to kind of charge him here and just really wear into him. You can, oh man, his stomp radius is so large. I'm going to die. <laughs> his stomp radius, I wasn't expecting to be inside of the stomp radius there. I don't think we're going to be able to get a uh, second win from this range, but we can give it a shot. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to. Like I said, Hurley's a tough enemy now. Um, first time using the new landscaper, so we'll give it a new try here. Uh, that stomp radius was larger than I was expecting, and then there was no cover for me to hide behind. My mistake there, but you can see that the landscaper up until this point has been extremely powerful, and I would imagine that it's going to remain extremely powerful so long as we don't play like an absolute idiot against Hurley here. So, get him slagged, and then we will go ahead and rush at him using the landscaper again. I guess we'll actually wait out his um, big fire here. Perfect. We'll throw the turret up there so that maybe he can't shoot it very well. I don't know if it'll actually distract him or not. Doesn't look like it is. So this is a good test to see how long these pellets linger before they explode. They do just explode after about five or six seconds or so. Man, his guns are very, very powerful. We'll wait him out here. All right. I hope we're not within his stomp range. And it looks like we were able to eventually finish him off. So that's pretty cool there. We did find a Captain Blade's Manly Man shield, which is kind of neat. Um, we'll go ahead and go forward here, kill the last two enemies. And then I want to see if this weapon's viable here on zero now. It'll be interesting. I'd imagine that even though Maya doesn't have, you know, really any grenade damage buffs, and you ordinarily wouldn't be using an explosive relic on Maya, that 
In combination with Maya's Convergence, this weapon could be potentially decent on Maya because you could, for example, fire a whole bunch of these, you know, in one area and then throw a Quasar to bring an enemy in and then phase lock that enemy to bring even more enemies in, probably blow up a bunch of them at once. I'm not exactly sure how well that would work out with a lot of the pellets exploding on proximity. So maybe you would have to uh, throw out the Quasar first and then do the Convergence and then just, you know, really lay into them here with the large splash radius of the landscaper. So let's switch over to zero. I don't think I have one of these weapons on zero at the moment. So I'm going to need to head back to Sanctuary just to toss it in Claptrap uh, clap Stash real quick. Excuse me, my mouth got real dry there. Claptrap's Stash. That's kind of a tongue twister. We'll head up here. Um, we're not going to do a full run with zero, probably just this first room. But I am interested to see if the weapon's viable now, even without grenade damage buffs, which Axton obviously has in abundance, and Zero does not. So we're going to go over to the Claptrap stash real quick, and then put this weapon inside of it. I guess theoretically I could have um, <laughs> just, you know, cut the video and gibbed it in on Zero, but meh. <laughs> this will be almost as quick. So... Claptrap Stash is obviously a pretty cool little feature. It allows you to transfer weapons between characters and stuff. I would almost appreciate, though, having just a ginormic, ginormous vault that also had this same feature. Now, I'm not exactly sure how possible that would be, what they had to do to program the Claptrap Stash. I understand that it's a different piece of memory than the rest of the game because we obviously use it for uh, quest reward farming and stuff. So it would be a little bit different, but interesting nonetheless. So we're going to switch on over to zero now, and we're going to see what happens when we use the weapon on zero. I would expect that the weapon's not going to be as powerful as it was on Axton, but I'm just curious to see, you know. So we'll head over to Sanctuary. We may need to respec. I'm not exactly sure how I have this character spec'd out at the moment. We can see that yeah, it's probably a decent skill build for it. I wasn't going all the way down the sniper tree, so it'll probably work just fine. Now, as far as which class mod I'm going to use with Zero here, I'm still going to use the Legendary Sniper Com so that we get a huge boost to precision and one shot, one kill. Obviously, this weapon only has about three shots per magazine, and therefore, we'll get the one shot, one kill bonus quite frequently. So let's go ahead and put this in the backpack real quick. I don't know why I have a customization item in here right now, probably for completing some sort of badass challenge. And if we can find it, I'll drop it, and then we'll go up and find the landscaper if I can the landscaper should be in here I passed right by it if I had to guess so it's definitely a blue tier weapon oh man where did it go did it just go into my hand oh it did just go into my hand because I must have had an open inventory spot so my bad there Ooh, I like how fast they move with velocity too that's kind of cute let's go ahead and head on over to the washburn refinery now and see what it's going to do for us I guess I can buy ammo when we get to the Washburn Refinery. Okay. So, Washburn Refinery is right here. <laughs> Found it that time on the overview map pretty quickly. I don't know why I forgot where it was that one time. And then we'll just stock up on ammo here before we proceed. Cool. We'll do this first guy without buffs from our action skill or slag. So you can definitely get critical hits with this weapon and that's pretty cool because Zero can disable loaders with that pretty easily with his critical hit damage buffs from a lot of his different skills. So it did finish off this guy for us. It does seem to be a little bit less powerful than it was on Axton, but the fact that it doesn't kill us now is a huge benefit. Obviously a weapon that kills you is not what you want a lot of the time. So we'll go ahead and head down here and see what we can do. I am a little bit low on health. Hopefully that's not a big deal for us. Now this weapon is not going to... I said it wasn't going to bore, but it sounded like it bored there. So um, yeah, I guess it does bore. Go ahead and try to finish this guy off too. Perfect. So the... Uh, the weapon's obviously a lot more powerful on Axton than it is on Zero, but the fact that it can get critical hits, the fact that it has a uh, fixed spread pattern, is obviously helping it out quite a bit here. Alright, so this is the guy I kind of want to uh, throw my 
one shot one kill from deception from but i think i missed deception there so my mistake on that one looks like we are going to go down there were just too many damaging enemies there for us to deal with i mean we had a super badass loader and a hot loader there and we were playing a little bit too aggressively let's go ahead and get this guy killed and then we'll see if we're able to lay a minefield for this exploder here in just a minute i'm going to back up and we're going to begin setting up these minefields now we don't have grenade damage buffs but even without those grenade damage buffs, our minefield still worked. And so that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can do a little bit better against this badass that we'll be a little bit more prepared for and we're only going to take on one at a time. I would expect this to be a lot better. Um, I don't know if we'll get the one shot one kill or not though. We'll see. So he's nice and slagged up for us. He has death mark applied. We have deception and a success substantial boost to one shot one kill and it is actually able to one shot enemies now so the fact that it got grenade damage buffs is huge on axton but i don't think that's actually the biggest buff that this weapon got i honestly think that the biggest buff that this weapon got is the fact that its spread is no longer terrible it it still has the increased pellets that it had from uh patch version 4.0 and you know, the increased splash radius helps quite a bit as well because you don't have to be quite as precise with the weapon. So this weapon went from something that I thought was bad even after it received its initial buff to something that is quite powerful on Axton and still viable on other characters. Obviously, Zero can get a one-shot, one-kill on a properly debuffed um, super badass enemy when you have Deception and you're boosting one-shot, one-kill. So this weapon has come quite a long ways, and I think that's pretty cool because prior to this, the weapon had always sucked. And so I think that's really, really cool that this weapon is now actually viable. As always, guys, I thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe, please do so. I'd appreciate that as well. Like uh, How Ridiculous says, turn the bell on. If you haven't done that, that'll make sure you get notified. Otherwise, you know, I do hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.